Today I've got a nice problem from the 1998 Polish Math Olympiad. And the solution here is pretty nice. You have to dig yourself way into a hole and then dig out of that hole. So let's see what we have. Our goal is to find all natural numbers m and n such that m squared plus 3n squared is equal to 1998m. Okay, so 1998 because that's the year of this test. Okay, so let's get into the solution. So the first thing that I'd like to notice is that 1998 is divisible by 3. We can quickly see that because 1 plus 9 plus 9 plus 8 is a multiple of 3. Really all that we need to notice is that 1 plus 8 is a multiple of 3 because 9 plus 9 is a multiple of 3. Okay, so let's see how that can help us. So 3 divides 1998 m minus 3n squared. We'll notice it most definitely divides 3n squared, but notice 1998m minus 3n squared is equal to m squared. So that means 3 divides m squared. But now if 3 divides m squared, that in fact tells us that 3 also divides m because 3 is a prime. Okay, but now we can say this, this means that m equals 3 times a for some natural number a. And now let's plug that back into our original question right here. So that gives us 9a squared plus 3n squared equals 1998 times m, but recall that m was equal to 3 times a from this right here. Okay, so now we can cancel a three from all parts of this equation. Notice that'll give us something like three a squared plus n squared equals 1998 a. Now we'll play the same game again that we did up here, but we'll play it with n instead of m, and that will tell us that n is equal to 3 times b. Looping that back in gives us 3a squared plus 9b squared equals 1998 times a. And now when we do this cancellation, we won't have to build this back up to 1998 by multiplying by 3. So as you can see, we'll kind of loop this in on itself a few times, and eventually this number will get smaller. Okay, so anyway, if we cancel by 3 here, that'll give us a squared plus 3b squared equals 1998 divided by 3. That's 666, so that's kind of spooky, times a. Okay. So now we can maybe play the same game again. This is a multiple of 3. 666 is also a multiple of 3. So that means a is a multiple of 3. That means we can write a as 3 times c. And then looping that back into the original equation gives us 9 times c squared plus 3 times b squared equals... 666 times 3c. Now, canceling the 3 again will give us 3c squared plus b squared equals 666c. But now, one more time, or maybe one more time, maybe more than one more time, we'll see that b is equal to a multiple of 3 as well. So we'll set b equal to 3d and write this as 3c plus 9d squared equals 3 times 2, 2, 2, c. Okay, nice. But now we can cancel this out, leaving us with c squared plus 3d squared equals 222c. But we're kind of back into the original situation, just with a slightly different number here. And so instead of doing those two steps separately, let's do them the same. So via the same strategy we've been using, we'll see that c is a multiple of 3. We'll call it 3f. And d is a multiple of 3 as well. We'll call it 3g. But that'll leave us with, let's see, 9f squared plus... 27g squared equals 222 times 3f. Now we can cancel 3 from this, or actually 9 from this, because 222 is divisible by 3. That leaves us with f squared plus 
3g squared equals 74f. So dividing out the 3 from this term just cancels. Dividing out the 3 from 222 gives us 74. But now we're in the position where we'd probably like to complete the square on this f squared and the 74f term. So I'll move the 74f to the other side and then add something to both sides of the equation in order to complete that square. So in this case, it'll look like f squared plus 74, or I should say minus 74f plus 37 squared plus 3g squared equals 37 squared. So I needed to add this 37 squared to both sides of the equation because that's half of 74 and then squared. So that leaves us with f minus 37 squared plus 3g squared equals 37 squared. Okay, nice. So let's maybe bring that to the top of the next board and we'll finish it off. So on the last board we ended with the equation f minus 37 squared plus 3g squared equals 37. Now I'd like to do one little transformation of that into x squared plus 3y squared equals 37 squared. And then we have a summary of our substitutions over here from our original variable m and n back to our final variables x and y. So we have m is 27, x plus 37, and then n is 27 times y. And so that's pretty clear from all of the substitutions that we did before. But now we're down to an equation which is actually pretty easy to guess and check. So first of all, let's notice that the right-hand side of this equation is odd. So that means that x squared and y squared have to have opposite parity. So in other words, x is even or odd, and then y is odd or even. So that actually cuts down a lot on the number of choices that you have to make. And then from there, we can play like an estimation game to guess and check this very quickly. So let's notice that if x is equal to 0, that means we have, would have 3y squared is equal to 37 squared. But let's notice that means that 3y squared is less than 39 times 37. I've just replaced one of these 37s with 39. But that tells us that y squared is less than 13 times 37. But then you'll see that that means that y has to be less than 26. So that really tells you you don't have to check so many. And so I'll let you guys maybe think about how to minimize the number of cases you'll have to guess and check on your own and just jump to the solutions. So here we get a solution of x equals minus 13 and y equals 20, or x equals 13 and y equals 20. So shouldn't I have a couple more when like y is equal to either 0 or negative 20? Well, notice, let's notice that if y is equal to 0, then by this over here, n would be equal to zero, but we're taking n to be a natural number, so that's no good. Furthermore, if y is negative, then n would be negative, and we no longer get a natural number. We are allowing x to be equal to negative 13, because plugged back in over here, that still gives us m a natural number. Okay, so anyway, plugging these back into our substitution, we'll see that this one gives us a solution of m equals 648, and then n equals 540. Okay, and then this one over here gives us a solution of m equals 1350, and n is still equal to 540. So those are our two solutions, and that's a good place to stop.